distribution or a discrete distribution some of the properties uh, we simply said that uh, each individual probability should be uh, between 0 and 1 sum of all probabilities should be equal to 1 but out of that if there are some common scenarios see why do we typically uh, use these probability distributions one to model our business processes right how does uh, let's say i want to do some kind of a modeling for number of claims that can occur during a particular period during one year what is the chance of getting 20 claims what is the chance of getting 40 claims i want to model something like that right so anything where i want to model something related to the discrete items what are these discrete items countable kind of items number of claims number of successes right number of number of something whenever we are trying to model number of something we are talking about discrete probability distribution so various kinds of models that are available for modeling number of something and any kind of these models for whatever we are going to discuss uh, now there are three important things that we need to understand one in which context i can use this kind of a model right for what business purpose i can use this kind of a model how do i find out the probabilities using this model and finally i am also interested in uh, finding out what are the characteristics of this particular model characteristics are nothing but the mean the variance something like that right for each of the model how do i identify whether it is uh, a form of uniform distribution or a binomial distribution or a Poisson distribution what makes me identify that it is belonging to that category of distribution once i know that it is a particular type of distribution how do i identify the probabilities of that particular uh, occurrence of number of occurrence of uh, one event or two events or whatever it is number number of something and what is the average of it what is the variance and standard deviation sorry mean and variance variance and the standard deviation associated with them right so we'll start off with uh, the uniform distribution the first of them simple see formulas wise you need not memorize because most of these formulas are given in the tables so the intention of uh, of this exercise should not be memorizing of the formulas but understand where i should use these kind of distribution for what kind of a purpose i can use this distribution or from a business example which he has given how can i convert it into this distribution right those are some of the aspects that we need to understand so the first of those distributions is the uniform distribution where all the items have equal chance of occurring all the outcomes which we are talking of if they have equal chance of occurring let's say for uh, throwing a dice right we can get one two three four five six and all of them have an equal chance it's a fair dice if it is a biased dice where some edge is broken or something where there are some high chances of getting some number compared to the other number then it does not follow a uniform distribution but if it is a fair dice or where people say equal chance for everyone right whenever i say that there is an equal chance of occurring i can simply take the probability of occurrence of each of them is nothing but 1 by 6 
How did I get this 1 by 6? Because there are 6 possible outcomes here. There are 6 possible outcomes. So each, each outcome has a chance of 1 by 6. So whenever I create a distribution of this form, whenever I see any example where the distribution is of this kind of a form, we categorize it as a uniform distribution. Now, in our uh, earlier chapter, what we have simply said is, this is a discrete distribution. We did not call it as uniform or whatever. We said this is a discrete distribution. So, for every distribution, what did we do in that, uh, in that chapter? We found out what is the mean of that. Mean, how do I find out the value into the corresponding probabilities and then add up? And variance we have found out expected expectation of x squared minus expectation of x whole squared. So for this I can find out the variance. Now what they say is, if at all I know this distribution is following some kind of a pattern, the mean and the variance, probably you don't need to sit and calculate doing this entire exercise. They are outrightly known. They are derived. What you are doing is the same. Let us say in this exercise, if I want the mean, 1 into 1 by 6 plus 2 into 1 by 6 plus 3 into 1 by 6 plus 4 into 1 by 6 plus 5 into 1 by 6 plus 6 into 1 by 6, which actually comes out to 21 by 6 or 3.5. What he says is, do not do that entire part. If you know that it is a uniform distribution, take the mean as n plus 1 by 2 where n is your total number of variables. So, 6 variables are there, right? 6 outcomes are there. So, you directly say that the mean is 3.5. You are not even calculating it. Well, if you calculate also, you will get the same thing, right? The same way variance. Now, if I have to calculate the variance, I have to do expectation of, uh, the, the, the typical way is, variance is expectation of x squared. Minus expectation of x whole square. This is the formula which we have uh, looked at earlier. Right? Expectation of x we got as 3.5. So, expectation of x square we will get by making, substituting x squared in form in place of x for the first row. And then multiplying it with the corresponding probabilities. And after I do that, whatever I am getting is the variance. Now, it says if it follows a uniform distribution, you don't need to do that entire aspect. The variance is directly coming out as n squared minus 1 by 12. n is 6 here, 30 36 minus 135 by 12 is the variance. If I know that the particular distribution is a uniform distribution, then I can very well say that the probability of occurrence of each of them is 1 by n. The mean of it is n plus 1 by 2 and the variance of it is n squared minus 1 by 12. Right? Of course, no point in memorizing, but uh, what? so you need to understand which scenario I have to use it. If all of them have equal chance of occurring, I can use this uniform distribution. Now, the next one is called as a Bernoulli distribution. See, in the uniform distribution, we talked about n number of outcomes. Right? And all of them have equal chance. Now, the Bernoulli distribution says there are only